You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Yeah. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. What's up, everybody? This is Corey from Norma Jean, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Hour, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I am your host, John the Bod, aka the Bod Father. And as always, I'm bringing you guys and gals awesome interviews. But before I introduce our guests for today's podcast, please get out and go to YouTube and subscribe to Bod's Mayhem Hour. It takes two seconds to click on subscribe and click that notification bell. That's it. That that's I'm just asking, please, folks, because come on, help me out, because i got a lot of great stuff coming down the pipe. Please, if you can, go out and donate to the Easter Kentucky Flood Relief Fund. Everybody needs it here. Everybody needs something here. So brooms, I mean, whatever you can donate, $5, $10, $20, it does not matter. If you can donate it, donate it, because it will surely help somebody. Trust me. So with that being said, I don't want to be to bring this down as a downer, but uh, <laughs> Our guest today is Mr. Corey Brandon, vocalist of Norma Jean. And Norma Jean will drop their ninth album. Ninth album, folks. Death Rattle Sing for Me on August 12th via Solid State Records. Also, check out singles Call for the Blood, uh, Spearmint Revolt, and Sleep Explosion. My brother, how are you doing? And welcome to the podcast finally. Thanks for having me, dude. I'm doing good, man. Doing really good. We're, we're uh, at the time of this recording we're gearing up for tour i know that by the time this comes out it'll be um you know we'll already be on tour it'll be but uh, yeah we're just we're moving fast over here trying to get ready to hit the road i gotta know how excited are you guys to release the band's ninth album death rattle sing for me man because it has to be mind-blowing to say we got nine albums out guys yeah I, I think in the in the length of time that we've been making music I start to look at that. I'm like, man, we're, it's, it's hard to make a set list now, you know, like how do I fit all this stuff in, you know, we want to play so much and it's, I mean, we have to skip entire albums sometimes. And, you know, I mean, even if we play, you know, one thing off every album we're it's like, okay, well we got, we got, we can fit three more. So it just, it gets, it starts to stack up, but it really, in again, in the longevity of it, I think it's, you know, we, we put out a record every, three years maybe two or three years so could have been a lot more i guess but yeah we're just stoked man this is we we put a lot of work into this uh put a lot of time and effort into building these songs and i mean we were just down to the last second of turning everything in just making stuff happen with it so yeah we're just excited as as we can be but you know what, Corey, having that many albums and plus songs to choose from, that's a good problem. But here, here's the other kick, kicker on this, though. Is there any songs that's not been played live yet that you want to put in a set list? Tons. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a lot. Uh, we we talk about it all the time. Like, you know, we want to put, you know, some more deep tracks in a set. But then when it comes down to it, it's like, well, we got to, we you know, this is a a request that we had, you know, over here, over there. So well, um, for this tour, we actually have three different sets that we're doing. Um, we have different shows that are, that are headlining shows, different sets for, for um, festivals than what we've been doing on the headlining show. So I want to ask this question and you can let me know what's wrong, what's right on it. And you can go from there, but you received the mock title valentine's day ass beater i thought that was absolutely hilarious when i read it <laughs> yeah and, and you were yeah. go ahead no that that was a that was the actually the mock title for sleep explosion um that, that's a grayson stewart thing um his 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 mock titles i because w- when we picked mock titles in the past it's just been like i don't know just we need something to remember it so we can talk about it like hey we need to you know work on this section of you know, whatever song we're trying to figure out. Cause we haven't figured out, you know, 
any of the the thematic stuff quite yet all the way so but his uh mock titles have meaning somehow but yeah it ends up ends up getting like shortened too and uh but yeah that's (laughs) i remember when he handed me that demo and and i was just we we were staying somewhere on tour and i was like dude this song's called valentine's ass beater like what are you talking about <laughs> it was really really late at night we just played a show and he's like i don't know man, i'll tell you later i don't think i ever got that answer bro but yeah i ended up like staying up and, and jamming that song over and over and i was just so pumped on it like he 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 writes for for my vocals he really thinks about that type. like he wants to write so that it pairs with me and we have a really good working relationship because of that kind of stuff i thought this is really cool what you did though because you were staying with a friend that night and you opted to sleep in the van so that way you could listen to this song oh yeah and over and over i mean did it come easily to to sing this or write these lyrics for you i, I mean let's talk about that a little bit well, that's the thing like i work from my whole engine is based on excitement and I don't know when that's going to come or go, you know? So it was late at night too. It was like one of the last shows of the tour. So we were about to head home, I think, or, or we were close to it, but I was just excited. So I knew that if, if I used that time, just kind of toughed it out a little bit, which I, I was having fun listening to it and figuring things out, but I knew that I would come up with something that would s- stick around till the record. And I, I really didn't change much from from what i wrote that night sleeping in the van and it's it was just you know like i was like oh man if you would have handed to this to me later it probably could, you know like be, be a more normal time of the day but I, I have to do that i'll be in bed you know about to fall asleep if i get an idea i have to get up and record it on my phone or something to remember it or it'll it'll just go away how difficult was it to set on these songs for you guys? I mean, it had to be itching at you guys to say, we need to go. We need to get this out. Let's go. I think we have felt like that before with this record. We didn't. We actually almost pushed it back. Oh, wow. Um, we, and there's, there's other different reasons for that that are more boring, but we, we just, we, it, it was a record that I think we really felt like was, kind of for us and whereas all hail was very much a tribute to our fans and you know they're the the different titles that they 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 they're the ones that came up with you know all hail and saying that kind of thing we, we took it from them and they were the inspiration behind that for so for this record it was just you know we're isolated and you know we're we need something to do we ended up writing 40 songs for this and we wow. had to pick so it, you know, we wanted to spend some time with it for this record. We were trying to make something that we hope that people listen to it, you know, five, 10 years from now and find new things from it rather than it just being like instant, you know, gratification with, with some, some of these tracks. There's, there's a, it's a very dense album. There's a lot of layers, some over 240 tracks we just we kind of we overdid it for sure um but we just we just we had so much fun with the process of making it that i think that we we just didn't want to let go of it of that feeling you know in that time but you know now it's here and you know we're we're stoked to to see people's reaction and hear hear the songs through other people's ears that it changes everything but you guys just wanted your own little black album that's no problem you know everybody yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah Oh man, I wish. I wish <laughs> the Norma Jean I'll take it. album. <laughs> we have to we have to sing about like Sandman's and Dreams and, and like or something like that. <laughs> That's how we have to do it. And the gods that failed and 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 wolves turning into man and oh lord. It's all ah, ah, ah. great Did, record. Great record. Oh god, yeah. Oh fuck yeah. Did the pandemic help you guys uh take more time to be creative on this album you think did it allow you to dive into more uh the songs it caused us to start earlier than we would have mm-hmm. because i mean we, we had just put out all hail we we had an entire uh record cycle of touring planned for 2020 and uh, you know when all that 
started to fall through, we, we thought, let's, you know, let's start now and use our time wisely. Cause at the beginning it was just like, uh, you know, this is just going to be a couple of weeks or something like that. Like, let's just use our time wisely and start writing. And, um, you know, two weeks turns into two months and next thing you know, it's a whole year or whatever, but mm-hmm. we just, it didn't stop. So neither did we. And that's, I think that's part of why we ended up with 40 songs. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we, it, it wasn't necessarily easier per se, but it caused us to start a lot faster than we would have. What led the song Call for the Blood to be the first track released off this album? And what was it about that song that said, that's got to be the one? That's the one, yeah. <laughs> it's, well, first of all, I think it's it's important to say that we are aware that it's the weird, it's a weird track. <laughs> and I think that's why we wanted to, we, you know, we knew that we were going to start dropping some bangers with like Spearmint and Sleep Explosion. And uh, we actually, you know, another song, uh, A Killing Word, by the time people hear that, hear this, A, a Killing Word had come out to um, just on the day of release. And, um, you know, these are all bangers. So, but Call for the Blood just, it really encompasses the, the type of process that we had making the record. And, and that there is a lot of experimentation going on and and sampling and layers and stuff and we thought you know when you release the first song um it doesn't matter what you did on the record and and how experimental you went or whatever you did that's what people will think of the album Mm -hmm. you know it's actually there's there's a band what's that band um uh, the band sugar ray like people don't know that that's a new they're a new metal band on like all of their records, but the songs you hear on the radio are these kind of like beachy poppy. Yeah. Yeah. Pop things. They're a new metal straight. Like, or I don't know if it's that they would call it new metal, but it's, they, they write heavy, like it's heavy. So, but that's what you think. So the first thing you drop, like that's the vision you get from the album that, so we wanted to show, we knew that Spearmint was coming really soon after, um, Call for the Blood goes straight into Spearmint Revolt on on the album. And we just wanted to show right away that there's a little more going on in this album before we start doing other things with it. Now, since you guys dived into that part of going outside that Norma Jean box that you're used to having, that comfort zone and experimenting, were you guys a little nervous after three years of creating this album with all that going on? Or did you said, nah, let's go? Oh yeah, we 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 weren't nervous at all. We were ready to go. We were to kick the sucker off. I mean, we're ready to do more. We, you know, we have another thirty or less than thirty songs that we need to do something with. So we're actually trying to get right back into it and try to get something out quick, a little quicker than we usually do. Um, we'll see how that goes. We have a couple of cool ideas, but no, I mean, we were we were stoked because. I, I like you know I was just saying before we didn't want to let go of the process and I think that was kind of the thing was we kind of realized we don't we don't have to we can keep writing sure you know we we could not tour we, we could just write if we want we it's you know we, we can do whatever we need to do of course we we're not going to do that we we definitely want to be on the road but yeah we 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 do, we love the process of it but we're definitely stoked that it's out are these songs that didn't make the previous album, are there any songs on that album that made this album? I know you said you had 40, but um, man, that's going to be hard to choose from, but were there any that came from the previous album to make this album or no, or left off to maybe down the road something somewhere? We we always think we're going to do that. And then when it comes down to it, we want new things. Yeah. We want new songs. There, there are B-sides and scrapped songs from every single album that some of them could be, you know, some of them are all the way through the process, vocals, mixing, mastering. They're just kind of sitting around and, you know, maybe we'll put those out someday, but they're B sides for a reason. And, you know, uh, I'm sure there's some stuff that we might use from what we ended up scrapping, but I just kind of know us (laughs) that we're going to get into it and think, you know, there's just going to be a flood of new ideas and we're going to end up, Doing that, but it, it could be very possible that we end up keeping something. It has happened before, but it's pretty rare. 
any tracks standing out more to you than any right now, Corey, on this? I know these are your guys' babies. I know and I understand that. But are there any that stick out for you personally? I think, oh, man, I think uh, the one that comes to mind for me is Call for the Blood for sure. Is a, is a, it sticks out because of what it is. And but the, there's another song called Penny Marks on, on the album that um, is, is, it's got a lot of contrast to it, a very contrasting dynamics and feel. Um, it was one of, the, one of the more experimental tracks, at least for me vocally. Um, so that, that that's going to be one to dig into, and it's one one of the tracks that, I, that ended up with a quite a bit of um, tracks on it. It's very dense, and that heartache is in there somewhere. It is hard to pick for sure. I, I think you know those three at least. Was there a track that you guys are working on that totally ended up sounding different than what it was intended to when it was first brought to the table? Was there one that just changed a lot, or or no? Uh, oh yeah, for sure. Um, Spearmint Revolt went through quite a bit of changes. We had actually tracked everything. I had tracked mostly all the vocals and we ended up not really liking the intro. Um, so we ended up doing some pretty heavy editing to the intro of that song to make it start with drums. It didn't start with drums originally. And there was some stuff that we did at the end. It actually, I can't even imagine doing this now, but we almost B-sided that song. We almost B-sided. Like what, what were we thinking? But dude, that's a thing. Like we're so close to the record. And especially with this one, we, we didn't, we, we didn't know what it was. We didn't, we, we, we didn't even know if it was good or if anyone was going to like it. We're just kind of like, you know, it, it really, we really reverted back to, like garage band days mm. of Norma Jean. Like it, I think, you know, we, we've done isolated records before purposefully polar similar was a isolation trial thing. Um, but this was, this was different. You know, we were forced into isolation. That was different. I think what we ended up, you know, the reason you do isolation is to get away from being too highly influenced by anything so you can find other things and i think when, in that moment for this record we we ended up looking for inspirations and digging into old inspirations there's a lot of 90s grunge uh inspirations on the record and um just kind of yeah garage band stuff like old school and we and we we technically do rehearse in a garage still so it, it works <laughs> that's awesome Keep it's a glorified up. garage given but it's still a garage. it's got the door <laughs> you're still keeping it like it used to be back yeah, in the, day. Yeah. the good old days as i call it we used to go to your buddy's house and jam out in the garage and you know, mm-hmm. comes down from the street just to listen to him and crack, you know, crack open a couple of beers and just keep playing, buddy. That's care. exactly that's <laughs> exactly the normal regime vibe. We've we we we've written uh three records in, in this place now. Yeah, we we've kind of decked it out and it's got air conditioning and stuff. It's it acts as kind of a a, a demo studio in a way, but the garage door is still there. You can s- turn the lights off, you can see the light coming through it. It's like this is not good you know, to keep the air in here at all. We need yeah. to probably need to fix that. But <laughs> yeah, man, that's that's really kind of the heart of the album is just Norma Jean, you know, as, as a group of friends in a garage playing songs together. But you know what, man, and I've said this before and people look at me like I'm crazy, but it's a God's honest truth. It ain't if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. It, it's true, if, man. If the process is there and making spaghetti the same way every damn time and it tastes good, don't fix it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a, that's a, what experimentation is all about. You know, finding where wh- where you might want to change something yeah. and where the mistakes might be. And, and you know, it, it's like if that didn't do anything for you, then scrap it. You can mm-hmm. change your mind instantly. 
So the album was produced by Matthew Putnam. Is that right? Putnam? It's produced by Jeremy S.H. Griffith. He also produced Meridional. Um, and then Matt is my brother. Um, Matt Putman is my brother. He produced a good half. Like I did most of the vocals tracking with Matt mm. and all the sampling stuff. A lot of, of the arrangement. Matt is essentially a sixth member of Norma G. He's a ghost <laughs> slash product producer member of Norma G. He doesn't tour with us, but he's been writing with us for the past two albums full on. He, he did all hail with us as well. Um, in, a, in a much, you know, bigger role, even um, playing drums and, and, uh, um, and, you know, then Matt Marquez came in and, and did the record, but <clears throat> Um, I've written with him for years, so we have a good working relationship, but he's he's behind the scenes of Norma Jean for sure. I, I got to know, man, working with these guys, do they push you all to get exactly what you're looking for? I mean, do they get something out of you guys that maybe if you work with somebody else, no, nah, wouldn't even come close? It kind of depends. Um, it's, it is good to be pushed in the studio, mm. especially because you've gone through this entire process of writing an album and you're the, the curse of being in a band or a songwriter is that you never get that experience of hearing your song for the very first time you've heard the entire process all you know completely lights on behind the veil and there's something to to say about what that experience will bring so getting new ears on the record and having someone else point out where things can be better and push, push us, challenge us. We, it's necessary. Absolutely. And it's hard for you to detach yourself from these songs because you're so close to them. And if anybody says something out of the way, it's like, I mean, that could derail everything. It's like, mm-hmm. Oh, we gotta go back and change all this shit. And it's like, no, just this one part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Yeah. I mean, but a lot it, of you guys, are, but a lot of you guys are so you know you can't detach yourself from it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times too, where we find that you know there's an issue with a part or a song. Mm-hmm. More what what the issue is is that it doesn't need more or more changes. It needs something to be stripped away. We're yeah. looking for space because it's so easy. And we have, I mean, we have such a hard time with it. As much as we try to find space and dynamics, you know, quiet parts, loud parts, stuff like, you know, or just nothing. Um, we try, we end up just filling space too much. So at the end of the process, we end up, it, it's a lot of taking things away to, to, cause you know, a part isn't heavy unless there's, negative negative space is what makes something heavy that the the nothingness before impact mm, yeah is, is what is heavy helmet does it better than anybody acdc is a good example too just lots of space lots of open um you know just open space to to make other parts work there's so many songs. I'm not knocking nobody. If that's your niche and, you, and your GIF, go for it. But there's a lot of songs, man, that just has too much stuff going at one time. And it's mm-hmm. hard. And I'm not knocking nobody. I love absolutely die, yeah. love eat sleep music. But there's so much. It's like you got stuff here, stuff here, stuff here, stuff here, stuff here, stuff here. Yeah. Like, just, just take away. And and then, phew, man. It's, well, sometimes it's it's, it's an override. Yeah, and and. And that's that's a another musician kind of curse thing because again you're you're close to the song mm-hmm. so you've been playing it now for a, a few months this song you've written you're you're not all you're not in the studio yet but you're probably getting close to it and you'll end up making it more complex and that's that's a that's a thing we talk about a lot is like oh this guitar part is very hard to play. Like it's technically I'm having to jump from over here to over here and I'm moving quick. It's like no one can see us doing that. You know, like there, I, there, there is a spectator element to music for sure. You know, and especially very complex music. It's like animals as leaders. That is a spectator 
type band was like the whole half of what that band is is seeing them play that insane stuff and having your mind blown it's just for us we we end up trying to simplify things at the end and pulling back again to because mm. we we've we've gone beyond what what the record is and we, we pull back do you like to see the feedback from fans on these songs to say, look, okay, the negative and the positive to say, look, okay, maybe next time let's not add so much of this or, you know, just from their feedback to get just a little taste of maybe what you want to cut back on. Absolutely. Yeah. More than anything. We, we listen to our fans. We want, look, we could make music and, and never release it. Yeah. And we, and we would be pretty happy with that but when when we release a record release music it's it kind of isn't ours anymore it we're making it for people absolutely we we subscribe to we we love entertainment we we love being entertainers there there is a, a in a record cycle there's an entertainment era of it you know like okay right now we're songwriters we're artists we're gonna build this packaging or make sure the artwork is cool. And we're going to make these songs and do recording. And it's going to be this whole thing. And like, now we're going to release it. Um, and it's for people that, I mean, I, even with this record, like we dropped call for the blood. Some of the comments were just confused. And to <laughs> us, the confusion was part of, of why we loved it so much. Like, yes, exactly. We are too. Now you're on the same page with us. We're, we're a little confused this is a necessary, you know, step for us in, in a, maybe a transitional way, who knows, but yeah. um, it's every record's transitional to the next one. It's just like throwing mud against wall, man. It, throw it up and see if it sticks. If it don't, you know, go on. Yeah. And, and sometimes too, you know, to me, it, a negative, it isn't negative to say, I liked the last record better. It's like, Oh, cool. You're, you're still a Norma Jean fan. And that is, I have favorite records too. Sure. One yeah. of my favorite bands in the world is Smashing Pumpkins. My favorite record is Siamese Dream. And I like other records too. That one's my favorite. Um, and, and that makes me a, a Smashing Pumpkins fan. Yeah. Um, you know, there everyone kind of has their records that they gravitate towards, or there maybe there was a, a time in their life that it meant more to them. And we're, we're perfectly happy with that. And we always just say, you know, come see us live. Cause we're going to play, or at least try <laughs> to play something off your favorite records um, as much as we can. And we love everything we've done. God. So yeah, I, we, we absolutely listen to our fans. It's very important to us to, to hear feedback. And we don't even know what these songs are until we hear it through their ears. Man, I tell you what, Sami's twin is Sami's dreams. Sami's twins. Yeah. Okay. Sami's dream. Yeah. That, that album is fucking amazing. Um, today's it's incredible. Yeah. It's mind blowingly. Like it, it is. Can't crazy. believe they did it. No. Almost. And I cannot think of the absolute slow song they got on there of him singing. Um, I used to be a little boy. Oh yeah. Um, I can't remember. Yeah. I'm not in that mindset. To right. them, but, but, but if this arm, it, this yeah, arm. Okay. yeah, 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 dude, if, if, if anybody doesn't love music and it's hard to say for, for me, that's hard for me to hear somebody say that. But if you don't like music and, and you listen to that song mm -hmm. and that don't change your mind or make you think about like, Oh God, or puts the hairs up on your arm. There's something wrong. <laughs> yeah. That record was very inspirational for what we did too with death rattle. Cause Really, uh, for in in different ways than people might imagine. So, for instance, you know, one of the heaviest songs on the record, one of the more complex uh, structures is "Spearmint Revolt," and you hear that title, you don't think of what that song is going to sound like, and that was absolutely the goal. We didn't want to, you know, it's like if you g give a record and you slap a skull on it with some blood and it's like, okay, I know what I'm getting with this album. I'm going to get that type of vibe. That's what's behind the music behind this. And so we were trying to subvert expectations and keep that away. I mean, even with interviews for this album have been pretty minimal because we didn't want to, we didn't want to like 
open that that same veil curtain before we gave people a chance to experience it for themselves. So on that record, Siamese Dream, there's a song called Mayonnaise. It's called Mayonnaise. But if you know the song, it's the, it's one of the heaviest songs on the on the album. And and when you know the song, it 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 feels different. It, the the title makes sense and you you end up liking it. So that was that was the inspiration really behind that that song title. Dude, I swear when you said mayonnaise, my favorite favorite <laughs> song about that is like mayonnaise. A lot of people here, and I'm from Kentucky, and that, that's a legit statement right there. Mayonnaise, that's it. That. Yep. <laughs> and I'm not making fun of Kentucky people. I'm Kentucky born and bred, but mayonnaise, that's exactly how we say it. So there, I made fun of myself. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. Southern. I'm Southern as hell. So I don't know another way to say it. <laughs> exactly, dude. And it's, like, it, it's funny when you say, hey, let's go down to the creek. And they're like, you mean the river? No, yeah. we're, we're going down to the creek. We're going to go fishing. We're going to go swimming. We're like, yeah. We're going to go up there, down there, up, up there at the creek. Oh, oh boy, come up, up a house. He ain't got no britches on. <laughs> We get this language, and it's funny. Oh yeah, people know. And we're sitting there going, <laughs> "Oh, I didn't even go as hard." Like that was I enunciated too much. <laughs> yeah, Fox really I of. can make that completely unless Like you can't even hear what I'm saying. Hey, some people, man, you can't. But it's so cool to sit there and go, "Now this is even," and that's so simplified for me. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I gotta ask this. We, we, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just saying, we have our own language down here. We do. We do. I think that right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you hope everyone takes away while listening to this new album, Death Rattle Sing For Me, man? What do you hope they get from it or just any of Norma Jean's music in general? I think more than anything um, for this record, and it, this is what it was for us, at least. Um, you know, I can't say what people will get from the album. But for us, I think escapism has been pretty important. You know, there's a lot of things going on in the world, and we and you never know what's going on with, in someone's personal life individually. Everyone's got their own things. And I think it's important to have things like a record or a movie you like or series you like, whatever it is, to get away from everything for a little bit. You know, refresh your mind and spirit, whatever it is, so you can face whatever those things might be. So for this record, that's, you know, we kind of see it as like, you know, head, put your headphones on and listen to an album. Oh, yeah. And and just escape. And, uh, you know, everything's online now, just the way it is. But I imagine this like old school days where you're you're in a in your bedroom plugged into whatever you play music through and, and just escape for a little bit. Um, you know, an hour or so, and then, yeah, just, just uh, have fun with it. That's it. You know, I'm I'm glad you mentioned that because I, when I was going to high school, I would come home every day, and and I had a big stereo system. I mean, speakers, the amplifier, everything, all that good stuff. Even even the record player that came with it, the record player. Mm-hmm. Um, I would listen to music all day long and i just i would the only thing i do I'd, I'd go eat sleep and listen to music that's all i do i didn't games i could care less about but i did play you know sports and stuff but mm-hmm. you know i never knew how much i needed music until i had one of my parents get real sick and master of puppets saved my life and that was even before stranger things folks before that yeah <laughs> so let's get out of the way yeah <laughs> That, same here dude same here that record was a headphones record for me there's a, i have so many of them but yeah i, I it's important man i, I think it's li- literally important for people to have places to get away there's plenty out there to remind us of whatever bullshit is going on and then on top of that everyone's got their own stuff and you know we so we don't we don't do that at Norma Jean, not at our shows, not on the record. And that's, that's what we're all about. It's just, like I said, it's entertainment. It's fun. It's a good time. It's, it's rock and roll. What's been your most memorable show or moment as a musician that you couldn't believe that you were part of, or just was like, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm speechless. You know what? Or have you had that moment yet? Oh, I've had, I've had so many. 
I've had my mind blown quite a bit being in Norma Jean. Um, I think the first time it really happened was um, when we did, I, I probably told this story a hundred times all over the place, but it's just, it's just the way it is. <laughs> but uh, we did OzFest in 2006 and, you know, it's, it was System of a Down was the headliner. Ozzy was, on, and Ozzy played the second stage on that tour. Mm. Uh, you know, he was always the headliner, but he wanted to like do his, like go back to his roots thing and like feel like he, he was, he was on the cool stage. I'll, I'll call it, but there was two stages on that tour and he played, he headlined our stage every night. And it was just so cool to share the stage with, with Ozzy Osbourne. Like, I can't believe it. And I, I I remember telling myself, like, don't forget this. Yeah. And and I I try to make myself remember, like, don't forget this, because you don't want to get spoiled. And it's real easy to get spoiled in in this world. It's, it's isolating at times. But uh, I think that's a big one. Um, we did some off day shows on that tour too with System of a Down. Um, it was just us and like Hate Breed and like maybe one other band, and those shows were bonkers man just so fun so th- those those stick out to me pretty big folks get out and pick up norma jeans not studio album death rattle sing for me on august 12th will be a solid state records and just pick up anything by norma jean give these guys a fair shot and i guarantee i said damn in there folks i don't say the whole lot <laughs> guarantee <laughs> Pick any of that stuff up. You will like something by these guys. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm going to say this right now with 100%. You will be brought into the Norma Jean family because they have some great, great stuff out there. So, my friend, how can folks stay in touch with you guys? Buy this album, everything Norma Jean related. How can they do that? Uh, best place to go is NormaJeanNoise.com. Um, follow us on socials. All our socials are the same. It's Norma Jean Band. And uh, we try to keep up with all that stuff as much as we can. We're out in September as well. We'll be in Texas, Oklahoma, and uh, Furnace Fest. We'll be doing some other stuff this year as well. So come out and hang. Before I let you go, would you care to do a promo for my show? Absolutely, man. What's up, everybody? This is Corey from Norma Jean, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. We've got some great, great stuff coming up. You only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour. Please go check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link and that YouTube link that I want you guys and gals to go subscribe to. Click the notification bell to keep up with everything that we got going on, and we do have a lot of stuff going on. Get out and check out Norma Jean. Pick up their ninth studio album. Like I said, Death Rattle Sing For Me on August 12th via Solid State Records. You will not be disappointed. Trust me. Also, everybody, get out and, if you can, um, please, please donate to the Easter Kentucky Flood Relief Fund. We all need it here, trust me, because some of these places, man, it looks like it's been hit by a bomb. I mean, seriously, it is absolutely devastated. So uh, please do that for me and keep these families in your in your thoughts, thoughts and prayers, good vibes, whatever. Send it this way for all of us here in Eastern Kentucky because we definitely get so. Corey, my man, thank you so much for doing this interview. And it's been, like I said, finally I could check off Norma Jean off my list because I want you on here for like at least five to six years now. Dude, I had a good time, man. We'll have to do it again. Exactly, my brother. Thank you so much. You're listening to Bud's Mayhem Hour. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.